Are you looking for comprehensive solutions for your performance and automotive needs? Straight Line Performance and Automotive is a full-service auto repair shop specializing in race car fabrication, electrical design, chassis setup and alignment. Located in Hampton, Connecticut, they also specialize in aftermarket high performance and chassis upgrades. Be sure to look them up on Facebook at www.facebook.com backslash straight line, S-T-R number eight, L-I-N-E, performance, ampersand automotive, or give them a call at 203-415-5316. Welcome racers and fans to your weekly dose of all things Sportsman Drag Racing. This is Racers News Network Live, presented to you by Straight Line Performance and Automotive. Your host, Chris and Pete, bring you the latest news and interviews in the world of Sportsman Drag Racing, including bracket racing, association races, outlaw, and no time events. They are live every Monday night, right here at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Take it away, boys. Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Racers News Network Live. Happy 2022. We are back. Uh, we have couple of cool guests joining us tonight going to talk a little bit of the uh dot 90 throttle stop stuff um pete should be joining us i haven't heard that he won't i know he's not feeling so hot but uh that's all right but we have uh both directly below me on my screen anyways is uh our other partner in crime jaron settles how are you jaron how are you chris good to be back i know i've been uh, absent for a little bit but uh i'm back we're gonna have some fun tonight Absolutely. Um, Jerron, why don't you go ahead and introduce our guests? Well, two of the coolest kids in all the Dot 90 race, and Mike Boehner, like, he's like the surfer dude, super gas guy from Colorado, so I guess you're like the skier guy, so, but you, you got that, like, surfer dude look going now, so, and then uh, multi-time world champion Jeremy Mason, like, it, it doesn't get any better than this when it comes to, like, super class racing, does it? How are you guys? I'm great, guys. How are you? Thanks for having us on. For sure, for sure. So, what so you guys? We're talk uh, a little. Oh, sorry, John. We're going to talk a little uh, on the stop tonight. So, why don't you go ahead and take it away, my man? Well, yeah, Mike and Jeremy came up with this cool idea uh, of racers helping racers with the on the stop uh, website or chat room blog, the whole deal. And I think it's a great idea. Uh, you know, when I first heard about it, I was definitely in for it. And uh, Mike, why don't you tell us a little bit about how the idea came about and uh, why it came about? You know, I don't even know exactly how it came about. It's kind of by accident, I feel. Um, Jeremy and I both, I think we, we have a, a big enough reach around the country that people feel comfortable enough with us to message us on Facebook. Or if they know us better, they might have our phone numbers that they'll call us or text us and just ask for some thoughts and opinions on their throttle stop program. And, you know, Jeremy and I, sometimes if I don't have the answer, I'll call Jeremy up and we'll try to help this guy out. And he'll do the same for me. And all of a sudden one night we're just like, man, maybe we should just start a group and just see how it goes. And here we are. It's kind of just snowballed and kind of came together pretty quick, actually. Yeah. One of the things that, that I enjoy about it, or, or I think that that kind of helps is that, you know, we've all had problems at the at the racetrack with throttle stop issue with, you know, RPM or whatever wiring. And of course, you can always go to your neighbor or a friend, that, you know, in the pits or maybe even call somebody. But this kind of connects you a little bit broader, you know, because, you know, whether it's a circuit board, you know, issue that the stop doesn't come on or something, somebody's had that. And you kind of get that information from so many different people now bringing, bringing it all, all together. So it, it makes kind of, uh, uh, you know, finding out issues a little bit faster. So I, I, I love the idea and I, I applaud you guys for it. Thank you. Yeah, I think 
I think the coolest thing about something like this is uh, not any one of us has all the answers to every, everything. Somebody out there has seen something that either I haven't seen or Jeremy hasn't seen or you haven't seen. But the bigger our group gets, the more knowledgeable we become. And somebody has usually come across something that is able to help somebody in our group, which has been really cool to see. And yes, and Jeremy, you, I told you my kid was going to interrupt. But, uh, <laughs> Jeremy, with you being a you know past world champion and, and I think in IHRA also and in HRA, I mean, you've obviously seen it all. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about is is the difference in racing. I know, you know, I ran quick rod years ago, and and, and I try ran a lot of I try more than any try until recently, and I noticed the difference in uh, in any try is guys will put 90s on you all the time, and that just I don't remember that happening in I try. Like you know, the, the racing is so much tighter, and and I can see where on the stop situation can can make that even better or worse if you're if you're the losing guy like me but what did you do you see any difference in the old i try quick rod days you know and and the difference in super count yeah so when i ran i cherry it was uh the tournament of champions top deal um so you know we all competed and raced at the end of the year and won uh one race for the world championship um but yeah like a lot of IHRA stuff we ran on eighth mile tracks, which actually tightened up the competition quite a bit. Like you almost had some bracket racing, double O dead on type stuff on a lot of passes, but yeah, you're completely right. And the quarter mile, um, you know, super comp nowadays, it seems like everybody can run 90, um, or they're just really good at getting to a 90 somehow. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's different. It's a little different in super gas. If you come over to that class, uh, I think it spreads it open a little bit, but I think, you know, groups like on the stop workshop and some others have, uh, tightened up the super comp game quite a bit, to be honest. I think it's more of a technology thing versus then an IHRA versus an HRA thing. Because sure. a lot of a lot of the same people ran both back in the day. Like I raced Pat Martin, uh, which is a yeah. D3 guy. I raced Jacob Belrod, you know. So yeah. I think it's a technology yeah. thing and a knowledge thing too. Yeah, for sure. You know, products have gotten so much better since those those days. And 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 we, you know, with on the stop now, you can find out what converter Jeremy's using or what, you know, it's auto stop or or box or you know those things and and even you know i've noticed you know on the site looking at uh some of the the comments and and the questions is you know what uh cruise rpm comes up uh, it seems like a lot and that's you know really important that was something that you didn't really have to guess at it years ago but you had to kind of find your own niche or the own rpm where to do it and now you guys are kind of putting it out there that you know if your combination tried here tried there whatever and and you kind of, you kind of had to guess at that years ago Right. Yeah, I think, think, go ahead, Jeremy. Sorry. I think the time from, uh, you know, when we started, it took several years to get a combo lined out. You know, if you're lucky, you could have it lined out in a year, but now I feel like I could sell my dragster tomorrow. Well, I did basically yeah. I built a new dragster and then, you know, won, won a race this year in it. So I think that time, it's just a lot shorter before you like hung on to a car for 10 years. Like, I don't want to sell this thing. I got it figured out. <laughs> now it doesn't necessarily matter so much. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. It's like, you know, the car I drive for Ted Wings Motorsports where <clears throat> the, over the winter, it was completely re rewired, new delay box, new everything. And I'm not worried at all that, you know, the setup's going to be anything, you know, because it's, I already know what to put in it. I know I can call Mike. Hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? You, whatever. And yeah, you, there is that, the, the, the length of time that you need to sort of car out has definitely shortened and, uh, and you guys are helping with that even, even more. That's the goal. <laughs> yeah. To, to make it even harder to win. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> no, that's not it necessarily. I think it's completely the opposite. I mean, yeah. in my opinion, I mean, I don't know if there's a single successful throttle stop or dot 90 racer out there that's that's done really well in their career that hasn't gotten some help from somebody oh, that for sure. something to help them. And yeah, and let's face it, like this is a really, really, really hard game we play. And the last yeah. thing I want to see is 
for people to give up because there's nobody helping them or they can't quite get a handle on something. So they take the throttle stop off and go bracket racing, or they take, take the car and sell it because they give up on it. They're not having any fun. That doesn't do any of us any good. It didn't do yeah. our racetracks any good. It didn't do the racers any good. I mean, companies within the industry selling parts to us, it doesn't do them any good. So sure. I think the, the most important thing in our opinion within our group is just to help racers, you know, to keep the sport going and keep it alive and uh, keep people motivated. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's been missing for a little bit with, with, you know, especially in, you know, some of the stock superstar classes where those guys are really, you know, down and dirty trying to find horsepower, you know, years ago, yeah, everybody wouldn't help you in super comp or super cast. So that, that does, you know, and, and we've all seen those guys, like you said, get frustrated, like, you know what, screw this. I'm doing, I'm going elsewhere. And you're right. We don't need that. We need all the help we get. So no, I, I definitely love that idea. I've used, you know, on the stop this year myself. Um, and it's, it's helped out our program. And, and uh, I, every, I tell everyone go sign up because it's, it's invaluable for sure. Well, it's cheap. That was, I mean, it's, I think in a day or two, you can gain a month's worth of knowledge in there. I don't know. 12 bucks. Jeez, man. That's it's pretty tough. That's a lot of money for, for a poor guy like me. I, mean, I, <laughs> just, I had to save up a year to get in, but you know, it is what it is. I just, I just canceled Netflix, man. I spend hours looking on Netflix. It's $12 a month, you know, on the yeah. stop, $12. <laughs> 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 so let me ask you a question. I mean, uh, is, is, this is something that, you know, we've seen a lot of people or a lot of companies turn to, to, to YouTube. Is this something that you, you guys may do like a subscription to, to like a, a, not really YouTube channel, but something to put more. Cause I know like a lot of people like want to see hands on, like how you set something or how you do this or whatever. That's something that maybe you might do some, some hands on videos uh, in, in the future or not. I, the sky's the limit. Anything's possible. I haven't yeah. thought of that, but it's, it's definitely not out of the question. I've, I've actually made a few videos. Uh, yeah, I run ATM stuff uh, for from carburetor standpoint, and I've made a few videos like how to set up their throttle stops and stuff. Sure. Yeah, I mean, we can definitely do some of that. I think that would be good. Yeah, just to kind of broaden broaden your reach, also. You know, I mean, you know, you're gonna you're going to give a little bit of that way for free, but you know, if you, if you reach more people and they, you know, get back on and, and start networking with you, then it's, you know, I believe it's a, it's, it's a win-win for everybody. Cause again, like I said, the, the more people that, that you can help, the better our sport is, you know, we're, we're, we need to grow. We don't need to, uh, to lose anybody. So that's just, just ideas. I'm, I'm Mike, you know, I'm always coming up with crazy ideas. Most of them don't work, but you know, I'm always thinking so. <laughs> <laughs> that's where that one popped up so let me ask you a question what's uh what's what's your schedule like this year jeremy as far as uh racing well um i had my schedule laid out and then they surprised me and said uh chicago was back on at the divisional level so yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna redo it but i'm gonna start down in d2 uh probably like silver dollar um sure. i know a lot of people don't like that facility and then i yeah. go to ram yeah. they see there so <laughs> yeah so but, but anyways I'll, I'll probably start with those two and then go d3 type stuff okay yeah yeah rockingham is is definitely doesn't have the best reputation and i think it's it's got a i don't want to dog rockingham but you know i'm not but it's probably a, a little bit worse than, than Reynolds as far as people talking bad about it i think but uh it's, it's still I, a nice place I think they're, uh, you know, the last year we were there, um, or this past year, um, the track was better than it had been. So, yeah, my yeah, stuff's back still in, nice. I don't, I don't have to worry about spinning, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I know back in back in the I try days, it was a a center lane. Like, if you got out of this five foot groove. You were in trouble, and I think they've kind of fixed that. It was a really narrow groove racetrack, but uh, yeah, and Reynolds kind of can go either way. Mike, what are you looking at for the season? Well, I think we're starting out with Pomona as of now, but I'm not, I don't have anything inked in. It's all penciled in right now because last two years have proven that we can't ink anything in, especially out here in the West Coast. 
And you know, you you've kind of proven that because I've watched kind of your your schedule last few years, and you're a guy that you'll just be like, you know what? No, I'm not going to go this week. You know, and like you'll skip races and still end up winning a division championship or not. So like, I kind of I kind of like the way you do things. You're just like, ah, we'll try this week. We may go this week, whatever. It's it seems to work though. So I'm 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 I'm, I'm for it. I'm I would much rather stay close to home. It saves a lot of money, and I like racing the racetracks that I know well, but. I'm fortunate to have a pretty easy schedule or flexible schedule to be able to pull off and go wherever I need to go last minute. Well, yeah, it was just like, you know, last year, I think you skipped, you, you, you won the Vegas national the previous year and then you skipped the first one. It's like, right. wow, you skipped it and you still almost won a championship. That's what I mean. It's like, you, you can just do whatever you want, you know? but and that's not true. You, <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it looks like it from the, from the outside looking in. <laughs> Well, I'm glad it. I'm glad it looks easy to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, everything looks easy from the first round lounge, Mike. I mean, you know, I have a, I have a permanent membership there. <laughs> That's changing this year, buddy. We're gonna, we're gonna change that. We're gonna change that. We got a whole new outlook. We're gonna definitely change that. So, uh, but uh, Jeremy, do you ever uh, consider coming out west doing some stuff, or have you ever come done any of the western swing stuff, or? No, man, I, I always like want to go to Vegas and I actually had the opportunity to drive Mike's car out in Vegas, uh, in 2019. Um, that's, that's a funny story. That's actually how we kind of met or became, yeah. friends. but, um, but no, I never, you know, my, uh, my motor home's old and my trailer's old. I don't, I don't want to no, be stuck in middle of Kansas or something. <laughs> Or Texas, Mike. Yeah, Texas, yeah, whatever. <laughs> or were you in Texas or, or New Mexico? I can't remember, Mike. Uh, I was in Texas. Texas, okay, yeah, yeah. Now I get it. I, you know, I, 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 I'm probably one of the most blessed racers to be able to uh, do what I do and and been able to race all over the country. Um, it's definitely uh, been, you know, really good. But I can tell you, I really enjoy racing on the, on the West Coast. Just such a different atmosphere. The tracks are, are, are really nice. Um, so I, I, if you get another chance, Jeremy, I would, I would definitely take Mike up on coming out to at least Vegas and enjoying that atmosphere and watching him just mow through the field. Like he does it almost every day. No, Jerron, you didn't understand him. I offered him to drive Debo and he turned it down. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, uh, that's, I don't know how you did that, Jeremy. Cause I, I, I've been begging him just to sit in it for two years, and he finally let me sit in it this past race at Vegas, and I, I you know, I didn't want to get out. So maybe maybe you did the right thing, because once you get in it, you probably wouldn't want to get back out of it. No, I always wanted to do the, like, Vegas National, or I forget the order, the National, the Divisional with SEMA in between, because I've never sure. been to SEMA. I think that would be cool. So Yeah, maybe, maybe. yeah that's definitely a, 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 cool, a cool little deal that they have there. It's – it's uh, – it's, it's, it's a lot of racing. It's a lot of time off. That's, that's the biggest thing, you know, why a lot of people, you know, don't do it, but yeah, it is, it is, it definitely is a bucket list deal. Seamless bucket list. Uh, so yeah, I would, I would definitely look into trying to do do that soon. Mike, uh, how far East have you been? Uh, Kentucky and Indy last two years is good. about as far as I go. No, I thought or I have I thought I saw you at Gainesville or Atlanta a few years back. Maybe not. No. I got you. I got you. Well, no. tell us, you got anything new as far as four on the stop or like, you know, kind of, you know, go over some things that, that you guys want to try this year or, you know, and then, you know, just kind of explain what, what the, what the package comes with when you guys, uh, when somebody wants to enter. So when you, when you sign up and you're a subscriber, you get, you get to be in our uh, private Facebook group and gives you full access to everything uh, that anybody else has ever posted or any uh, anything that we've ever discussed. It's there. It never gets deleted. Uh, we try to keep it in a nice organized uh, manner, whether it's in guides or discussions. So it's easy to sift through it. Uh, we also have once a month, we try to have a Zoom meeting uh, about a specific topic and uh, usually with one of our coaches, I guess, I don't even know if that's the right word to call them, but uh, what's different with our group, or I think with our group than a lot of the other uh, sites is 
we have multiple like so-called coaches in the group, uh, like a different expert in different areas of the, uh, we have a transmission and converter expert, um, weather station experts, uh, you name it. We got a chassis guy, suspension guy. Um, so we'll try to have a Zoom meeting and uh, discuss in detail uh, with that one specific topic. And sometimes they kind of change on the fly. We see that uh, guys and gals in the group want to, uh, they all seem to have a common interest in something. So we'll shove what Jeremy and I thought was a good thing to move on with and give the give the group what they want. And that's the, I think that's been the thing with us is we aren't teaching tutorials or anything like that. We're just letting you tell us what you need to learn with your specific program. And sure. we just try to help with it. It's just more one-on-one -on -one help, I think, with each individual racer. That was going to be my next question for, as far as the Zoom meetings go. Can a person that, that signs up a member, could they, you know, suggest or, you know, pick what the Zoom meeting could be about? Like if they're having, you know, converter issues, could you come in and say, hey, Mike, can we have a Zoom meeting about converters? Can, and you get Kevin Kleinweber on there. Is that something that could happen? Yeah, that has happened. Um, we've okay. had, I had the intentions like two months ago to have, Kleinweber and to talk uh, converters, but we had enough people really uh, like in a bigger need wanting weather station talk, whether it's how we figure uh, weather factors or how their weather station works. And we've shoved aside what Jeremy and I had scheduled through the weather station talk in first. That's 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 good because that's going to keep people interested that you know they that their input matters that they feel like they can come to, come to you and not get pushed to the side. So yeah, I, I like that. That's cool. Yeah, I mean it's it's hard to please everybody. I think we're sure. just shy of eighty members right now, which I feel is good. Uh, we're in the off season and we're only three months into this. I think we launched this October, right, Jeremy? I think was when we. Yeah, that's when we really we I like soft launched it around the U.S. Nationals and then. Yeah, we announced it, but I don't think we accepted any members or anything until October. Yep. So yep. we're only a few months yep. into this and in the off season. So I feel really, really good about the amount of people we've got in. Yeah, that's that's definitely a phenomenal number for only, only three months. I mean, that's, you know, almost averaging 30 a month, you know, something that just just stopped, just started. And like you said, it's the off season. So, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Um, you know, what, what are some of the questions you find about the, the weather station stuff that, you know, cause that's always, you know, a, a, a hot topic amongst racers, you know, what, what, what questions were you seeing that people wanted to, to really know about the weather station? For me, I get the most often is what I look at, um, you know, like what, what weather I do look at and take an account for ET changes or throttle stop uh, changes. Um, and then another popular one is um, what are my factors for each uh, bit of air that I look at? Sure. Jim, yeah, I, I get the um, same, basically. Yeah. And, you know, um, we had the very first, we actually did two weather ones kind of back to back. Um, we did one with uh, Computech. They came in and you know, he talked about different weather factors and how often his unit samples and some of the cool paging features and all that stuff. And then he actually talked about weather factors, like what his customers typically use. Uh, and then we wanted, uh, you know, he, he took, uh, we tried to keep him around an hour to be respectful of everybody's time. So, you know, we had a pretty good discussion, but we were bumping up against the hour. So, then we came back in and, uh, you know, myself and Mike just had one uh, kind of a Q&A, like kicking around ideas, an open forum between all of our members. So, um, you know, it, it was really good. It's really good. But yeah, the weather factor is the biggest one. Like what what weather factors do you use and which which ones? Oh, well, I use these. Um, well, maybe that's double dipping. I don't know. Sure. And, then, and then the biggest one that I'm kind of intrigued by is like the HP factor. Um, a lot of a lot of weather stations use the H, HP factor like they spit out that number, but not a lot of people use it. So. Right. So I'm, yeah, I'm what good. does it mean and what is it? Yeah. What is it affecting? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm not going to lie. That's something that's kind of boggled my mind about that. I, I don't really know how to use that, that HP factor. That's something that, that I need to dial in and, and uh, get with you guys about too. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've been, I haven't really been using it to dial my car so much, but I've just been paying attention to it. And then I typically use it to choose which run I dial my car off of here lately. Seems to be working okay, but as far as me telling you like 0 0.01 moves it 100 yeah, times. Right. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, but no, that's 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 great. Like, you know, one of the things that, you know, me and Mike had talked, it, I had a problem this year with, with my dip and uh and, and the stop and then i saw some other people were kind of posting on that and it, and it looking at what they had it kind of helped me kind of tune some stuff to, to to mine i didn't get it out yet but i think i have it narrowed it down what it is though for sure and uh like i mentioned before earlier it's it's with this with on the stop with the forum you're able to get so much more input than you can just at the track you know when that when that dip first happened earlier this earlier this past year you know, on the stop wasn't out yet, but there was only four or five people that I could call, you know, figured out, well, now I can go in there and pose that question. There might, there's going to be 80 people possibly that are going to, you know, figure out, try and figure out what the problem is if they've had it or, you know, say this or that or whatever. So that's the beauty that, that, that I like about it. Yeah. And the cool and, thing is that not everything is specific just to dot 90, like say a a, a, even a bracket racer or a stock super stock guy could get some information out of different stuff you do like you know like mike was talking about the weather station stuff that still applies to them as well correct yeah absolutely it definitely does um i mean i i would not be opposed to having anybody a bracket racer a stop super stock guy in there but i'll be honest I mean, we aren't I'm, I've never bottom bowl braced in my life. I wouldn't even have a clue how to help those guys other than dialing a car is all the same. Right. Whether, no matter what car you're, we're just throwing a timer and a throttle stop in the mix to complicate things. <laughs> yeah. Right. But I'm just saying things. that some of it still applies to them too, where they can sure. get some knowledge out of, out of that part of it. See they Chris, they're a little bit smarter than us because see, we took cars that were perfect threw a throttle stop on them and ruined them. <laughs> so that's the difference. <laughs> yes. Because you could have the best bracket car on the planet. You put a throttle stop on it and it's not good anymore. <laughs> all over except for the, the crying. Well just the throttle stop so throws so many variables in it, you know, that it that it just I mean I don't I don't know why. Maybe Jeremy and Mike can can explain that, but I know for a fact, you know, I've I've years ago I bracket raced a, a car that went you know seven o's and it would, would go seven oh five seven oh five seven oh five and we put a throttle stop on it and it wouldn't repeat for anything <laughs> so you know but uh I don't know why Mike Jeremy I'd, I'd want to look at some data acquisition I'd tell you a lot <laughs> if you had it and well see I, I forgot you never bracket race so you did you don't know how good your car is <laughs> that's actually not true before i moved out west i i did a lot more bracket racing at bandon oh. than i ever did i always ran it on the stop also but we did a lot of bracket racing back then well bandon is just one big curve anyway so we're not gonna we gotta exclude you out of that because that's true you're probably right <laughs> i love going there but good lord that place is killer <laughs> <laughs> yes it is it's tough <laughs> We uh like that I, I it was we left there this year and went straight to Pomona and it was like we took the throttle stops off with the throttle stops still on it was like wow this is how fast my car really is because we ran there for like, I guess two or three weeks in a row at the divisional yeah. and the national and went to Pomona it was like wow I forgot how what it felt like to drive a race car <laughs> it felt like you're in a highway the uh, car at Bandemir but uh, imagine but how the locals feel yeah yeah. 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 I've, I've watched some YouTube videos, you know, they're just kind of local racers and, you know, you see somebody go at 1050 or something with a Camaro and it's like, man, they, they realize they've got a nine second car on their hands. <laughs> <laughs> if they've never gone anywhere, but, but Jeremy, my, my, my question was, you know, do you think that, that that's true? Like, you know, the thought of stop hurting a good car or, 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 or was my stuff just in left field? Uh, well, I think a lot of people make uh, like the, norm is to jack your starting line rpm up uh, and and sure. i think we introduce a lot of uh variables and throttle stop racing to hit the pro tree and uh yeah. you know 
you've got your chassis loading and unloading. And I think a really good throttle stop car can be a good bracket car because I can turn my throttle stop off on my dragster. My super gas car is a different story. Um, yeah. Just the way it's set up, but I can turn the throttle stop off on the dragster. It, it's it's pretty good. But yeah, I think we do introduce a lot of variables. You know, you have to make some changes between between the two. Yeah. yeah super class car versus a bracket car bracket car yeah especially i think from 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 day to day you know you're gonna see i think the spread is is a little bit different you know you run a saturday night bracket race or saturday bracket race and a sunday bracket race you're pretty much going to be dialed the same thing but and, and this also you know me coming from the from the east coast i may be introducing my data because the west coast is nuts as far as the the the, the swings i've never seen weather swings like like the west coast maybe division three is similar but uh the west coast just boggles my mind how 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 huge the uh the swings are so i need i need on the stop just to help me with that yeah it's i think the wind mostly yeah me yeah. and mike talk about it, it's the wind and that's my uh you know we don't i mean we deal with that some in d3 but typically like if it's a headwind on a day it's just going to be a headwind that whole day we don't deal yeah. so much i mean it varies track to track right but sure yeah just i think vegas is probably one of the things like mike mentioned the wind um it that place will change in in minutes like it's it's it kind of reminds me of mile in michigan mile is kind of that that way you know because of the great lakes or whatever in that area <clears throat> when the motor city nationals years ago up there and it was like it changed, you know, from the time we left the trailer until I pulled in the water was different. Like, wow, this is crazy. And, uh, but Vegas is, is pretty rough too. Yeah. Another, another one we get quite often in the group is data acquisition. Like, Hey, my, I, I, I had that, like my Chevy too, this year, I picked up some random interference and to be honest, I still don't have it fixed because but I, I did have some really good things to check in the group and a, a few things that I haven't checked yet. That's probably the problem, but. Yeah. That's one thing Mike kind of taught me is, is that acquisition. You know, I was, you know, being an old school bracket racer, I just, we shoot from the hip, you know, uh, me and Troy Williams talked about that, about an Indy that both of us were probably the only guys that were, wasn't even looking at, you know, computers. We're just shooting from the hip because that's what we did bracket racing. And, you just can't do that anymore, you know, and, and that's one of the things that I, I learned from Mike about is, is that acquisition. And I still have a lot to learn from that. So, but that's definitely something that maybe I want to do on a, on a Zoom meeting is talk about that acquisition. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that's the most valuable tool we have on our race cars if you've got one. Um, and I know it's not in everybody's budget and I get that because I'm a really small budget racer myself, but Gosh, I mean, you can buy them fairly inexpensive. I mean, a thousand dollars is a lot of money still, but sure, it's it can save you so much money in the long run just just by taking the guesswork out of it. I mean, we can usually look at a, a guy's graph and they think their car lays down flat or does the same right. thing every time, but when you start laying runs over the top of each other, you start really seeing the yeah. gremlins that you really are fighting. Right, exactly. Yep, yep. It pulls them out for sure. And and it goes back to what I said about, you know, earlier we were talking about everybody putting up 90s, you know, our being Troy's way is just to, you know, hold a 10th and, and drive you. Well, you can't do that if the guy's going 90 with a two flat out, not even looking at you. you know? yeah. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to kind of get into more data, data acquisition and, you know, weather station stuff like that, just to say, all right, well, I'm not just going to wing it like I normally do because that it just quite honestly isn't isn't working anymore i mean it doesn't even work in bracket racing anymore to be honest with you but um that's something that i'm going to be uh talking with you guys about a little bit more throughout the season is is uh refining that 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 acquisition program yeah i you know mike mentioned low budget and you know for the longest time i never had data acquisition but i use a gopro like I would mount a GoPro and make it look at my attack. And then, you know, if I wanted the next run, wanted to monitor the shock, I'd make it look at the shock and, you know, yeah. something for some guys that can't, can't afford it. Yeah. Well, there's there, where there's a will, there's a way. So yeah, you, there's, there's always a way <laughs> to figure it out for sure. And, and that's, 
that's you know obviously it's not going to give you the, the the data that a race pack or or you know and you know auto meter data acquisition whatever is going to give you but you know if you have the ability to play that back and slow mo and do things you can probably find out a lot more than you than you thought you could with the with the gopro yeah. that's definitely a good idea Mike, are we uh, are we going to see you in Supercomp or see the team in Supercomp this year? I doubt it. We haven't even touched that car. It's actually above me up on the lift. It got <laughs> thrown in the shop and put up in the air. As soon as I got the Camaro out, I had to get the motor yanked out and blow that thing apart. Our off is so short. And not only that, I'm also in the middle of restoring an old classic car that I had in high school. And I just got too many things going on right now. And there was, I knew there was no way we were going to have that car ready by spring. So, so gotcha. we get it done when we get it done. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I got you. Now, that's that's one of the things that I learned racing on the West Coast is there pretty much isn't an off season. Like, I don't know how you guys like live like that. <laughs> like, I think and, we have 10 weeks this year. I think. I, I think it was nine or 10 is but I, I count it when we were at Vegas. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty nuts. So it doesn't give you much time. Whereas here, so, you know, I'm in Maryland right now. We got a foot of snow. I just finished shoveling snow about an hour ago, uh, which I'm not happy about. Mike's out there sipping my ties by the pool and I'm shoveling snow. Uh, but our, Keep it our down office, there. what's that? Keep it down there. I don't yeah. want it up here. Uh, yeah, and that's that's kind of weird that you guys didn't get anything and we got it. So my area where, where I live at, the city I live in, we got the highest total, which was right at, at 12 inches. And we normally, because I'm kind of Southern Maryland, we normally get just the, the trailing, but it dumped right on us today. And and all, it, I don't know if you've seen any Good stuff. Good for you. <laughs> but it's been uh, 95 near me is, was just gridlock shut down. People were stuck for five or six hours out there. It's It was an absolute mess today. Um, but like I said, our, our winter season, like our tracks are racetrack. Awesome. <laughs> we won't see a racetrack for another three months around here. Whereas, you know, and even you, Jeremy, you guys are, are kind of in the, the, the winter area. On a, out in D7, like, do you guys have a big break in the summer? I haven't looked at your schedule, to be honest. Like, could you refresh in everything in the summer if you needed to? Or is it? Basic? Yeah, you can. And a lot of guys do. Um, the thing that's thrown at a kicker for me for that is, is a lot of times I'll, or there's been times where I'll go to Denver and run a division race in June. And then we've got our national, and usually we've had a double divisional at uh, Sonoma in July. Yep. So then that basically only leaves you the month of August. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, you know, a lot of the D2 guys do the summer freshen up thing, so. Yeah. Yeah, for that's, that's what I've noticed the last couple of years racing out west was that there's a little bit of a winter time. There's like, a bunch of little short breaks but nothing kind of long because like right. you said a, a lot of us will go to denver and run that and then the sonoma divisional and i think in years past it was fontana was like in april something like that so there was there was like a two or three week break and then two races and then two week break you know it, but it was nothing like we have over here where we're done for six months <laughs> yeah that seems like i uh, have a comment on the facebook page from chris garrettson I use Family Software's Data Master and wouldn't be without it. All digital RPM versus drive shaft, accurate to one inch on the track. To kind of go back to the data acquisition stuff a little bit. Yeah, uh, the Family Software I think was Bob Kodadex stuff years ago. I don't know if he's if he's still making any new stuff or not. But uh, I believe he is. I know okay. of a few people using his stuff. It's not. I think it. I've never seen a whole lot of it out west here. Uh, he must yeah. have been a little bigger back east but i've heard right. good stuff about him and his product I yeah think, I've, go I ahead think, jeremy i think dean uses his weather station and paging type stuff right he makes weather yeah. station too and I yeah think. and uh garrison's obviously a hitter he's the he's the little mile an hour killer that yeah. i try to I don't ever want to race him, <laughs> but uh, uh, so obviously you know uh, Bob stuff works for him, and and uh, that's 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 some good information. That like I said, I didn't know that they were still making stuff, but yeah, he's definitely uh, that's that's solid information from Chris. Yeah, Chris is cool. I got to meet him. That's what's been fun for me is 
uh, or going back to Indy the last couple of years. I got to meet him the last two years and nice guy. Thanks for joining in, Chris. I've unfortunately never met him, but I've uh, been at some races he's been at. And, and uh, the last few years I ran division one and I ducked him like crazy because that, 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 that 120 mile an hour is freaking nuts. Have either of you all ran a, a top end stop guy? I know they're, I mean, they're getting more popular. Like Chris, Chris has been doing good and yeah, Kunkel did pretty good with it. Yeah. Yeah. James Kunkel had a good couple of years. Good years. Tim Nichols, we have one Tim person here on the four East speed and a top end stop. Yeah, that's true. There's one it's, person that I know of that Jerron knows the same one I'm talking about that does the reverse throttle stop. Who also and, runs Rob Keister, who runs Mid Atlantic dot ninety. Mm -hmm. yeah. His dad has been running that reverse throttle stop since Christ for was a long child, time. pretty much. Yeah, yeah. For, I've fortunately never run one. Um, you know, it, it, I definitely, I mean, it's, it's, it, to me, it takes out, uh, you've got to set up dead on, you know, or, or close because you, you're not going to drive, especially like a car I drive that goes 185, 186, you, you're not going to see that 123 or whatever. So, uh, I, I, it's, it definitely throws a variable in it. And, you know, I, I personally wouldn't want to do it solely because I like going fast, yeah. but I can see where like they, it screws people up because you, it's a total different look. I think it can be a like a tactical advantage for sure. sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it absolutely is. In my super gas car, uh, I for some reason have run several of them. Uh, we don't. I can't think of any of them in D seven, but I for some reason <laughs> seem to run Greg Hare out of D six. Him and I match up all the time, and I've had to run him several times. And then I ran a guy in Indy. Um, I think in a a little dodge something it wasn't a daytona i don't remember his name though and i think he was a top end stop but the thing that's tough for me and the, what's that did you know it at the time or did you yeah. like as you're yeah, on I the top like watching him drive away like oh <laughs> no i knew but just because i'd looked him up i look everybody up do as much homework as i can but the tough thing is is if you get thrown in the left lane i got a big giant scoop on the car i they disappear i don't see him ever yeah. After we let go of the button, I see him disappear on the when I'm on the stop. I don't ever see him. See, I, I don't ever do like enough research, but the, the race I was at this year, I had to run. Uh, I, I don't remember the guy's name, but um, it was a, like my first race in the dragster. And I'm still like getting it figured out. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to set it up for like an 85 this past just to, you know, see if I can do it. And like I let go and I'm like, oh, I'm pretty. Oh man! I'm <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a shock to the system for sure. You could have seen my face underneath the helmet. It was probably just like mouth wide open, like crap. <laughs> I wasn't planning on this. <laughs> the closest I've got to that is at Vegas Divisional last year. Trevor Harkin was there, and and uh, he was having throttle stop problems. I guess. I don't know. Trevor's one of the guys that'll, that'll pull, pull a bunch of tricks out, but he did that. We left and I go on the stop and he just is motoring away. I'm like, wow. All right. Well, this, this will be easy. Cause uh, I'm not holding a ton, but he's going seven fifty or something. <laughs> and he just goes down there and stops. And I stopped too. And I, it he went like 119 or something and goes like 906 or something like <laughs> what? <laughs> so yeah, it's the same way. If you can see my all of it on the track, I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> but uh, I, I raced a guy um, a little earlier this year, um, and he like did his normal stop thing, and it, it was a D3 guy. I'm not gonna mention his name because he's probably sure. trying to throw people off with it. But uh, <laughs> you know, we we both went on the stop, and he's a little faster than me. Um, but we came off at the same time and he's like motoring out and I'm like, it was the first time run. And I'm like, man, I screwed something up on this timer because he's pretty good typically. And, uh, and then all of a sudden he like lays over, like he double stopped it. And I'm yeah. like, and I, man, I love stuff like that. I think it's cool to have different tactics and, you know, everybody runs 180, 185. I think it's cool to have a little. For sure. Yeah. 
yeah, I'm just I'm just not smart enough to add too many tactics because I'll forget the other ones. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. I gotta I gotta I gotta perfect my one or two tactics first. Yeah. I agree, Jaron. Baby simple, step, simple <laughs> as possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know, and you know, Mike mentioned you know doing homework, you know, finding out of people, you know. Again, me, me and Mike have talked a lot about like older, older racing, you know, racing when you were younger. And I just I, I, it used to help me that I didn't know people that I raced. But I think now I'm going to have to start doing homework. I didn't do homework in high school. That's why I'm a custom painter. But I guess I need to start doing homework at Supercomp because it's not working. Yeah. Either. <laughs> I think I think there are two two philosophies, though, man, like like if. Yeah, I just read a book by like Bob Rotella or whatever. and. Like, you know, if you're a golfer and, and you look at the leaderboard and the like number one guys 12 under and you're like, oh, man, I need to make I need to do something special. Then you screw up. Right. right. I, don't, yep. I don't know if like looking at it helps or hurts you. I, I don't I'm, the, I'm jury's out. Yeah, <laughs> and that's that's kind of the way I was years ago. Is I just didn't want to know because I didn't want to have to, you know, make some crazy plan. Obviously, if I knew the guy or whatever, then all right. But. You know, super comp. I didn't want to know what you were doing. I'll figure it out when we get out there because I'm I'm kind of an overthinker. You know, that's why I'm late putting the belts on, late putting the helmet on. I'm rolling the water, putting gloves on because I don't want to overthink what I've already got in motion. You know, uh, whereas I think Mike is more a more of a you know guy that can you know be a little bit more. Uh, <sighs> He, he, he composed himself enough to, or he has enough discipline to not overthink situations. And, you know, if he's got a plan, he's going to stick to it because he already knows what the guy's going to do. Basically, Yeah. I don't know if there's a right or wrong way. It's just whatever you're comfortable with. And I know yeah. really successful racers that never look at what a guy's doing. And I also know of other successful racers that like yeah. map out, they know at the eighth mile, they should be four feet behind and, at the thousand foot, they should be 18 inches behind. Right. There's, I don't think there's a good argument either way, just whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah. It's, it's all men, all man. I yeah. Mean, all. <laughs> my, my son is a, is a junior Olympic archer. And one of the things that I taught him from the, from the get go, when he started doing it, when he was like six years old, was worry about yourself. Very simple, very simply put. Shoot, shoot your end. Worry about yourself. Don't don't look at the score sheets. Don't whatever. Play, you know, do your thing. And it's it's the same For mentality, sure. just on a different level, obviously. Yeah, yeah. You, you can only drive one car, so you know, you shouldn't that's kind of what was my theory that you know I can't help what he's doing. So if I do what I'm supposed to do right, then we'll be fine. But uh but I but I do see, you know, like like Jeremy was saying, some kind of pros and cons with both, you know it definitely has to help a little bit. You know, I, I kind of know I've watched Mike enough to know kind of his sort of game plan. Uh, he's got a huge bag of tricks. So if I was able to run him, I'm going to have some sort of an idea. Okay. He could possibly do this, possibly do that. So there is some, some, some pros to that, but I, you know, I, I also feel like just not knowing anything is, is more of a, you, you, I feel like I'm, I'm going to make less, less mistakes, not knowing exactly what, what the guy's going to do. Jaron, we've seen your onboard cameras. We've seen your time slips. You're driving with your eyes closed at the finish line anyway. Oh, oh, man. When, I, when I let go, I close my eyes and I open them at the, at the ET shack. All right. So I believe it. The, there's no secret to what I'm doing here. <laughs> I'm gonna get my shift together this year. All right. I'm it's gonna be it's just 2022. It's a brand new year. Got brand new backing from right trailers. Happy to to announce that. And uh we're gonna we're just gonna have some fun this year. It's no 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 emphasis on winning, no emphasis on losing, just uh make it to the race, have some fun and make it back home. Sweet. I'm gonna make fun of you either way. Oh, absolutely. Now, being... and you and about five thousand other people, yeah. With that being said, Jaron, where do you plan on racing this year? So, schedule so far is uh, Pomona, Phoenix, Pomona National, Phoenix National, Phoenix Divisional. Uh, and then uh, we're kind of, you know, all the all the D7 uh, Divisionals, Nationals, oh, I'm not sure yet if we're going to run the whole Western Swing, half of it. You know, the whole uh, 
getting rid of the the uh, uh, Sonoma Double kind of hurt. I think a lot of people. Um, that used to be a nice race to run, you know, there. So are we going to go to Seattle? I don't know. Probably not. Maybe. Are we going to run Denver again? Maybe. Um, but uh, definitely all the Vegas races, Phoenix, Tucson, uh, a couple of East Coast national events. I'm not sure which yet, but uh, it's going to be a full year. I'm uh, Actually, next weekend, I'm going to be in Brainerd or Brainerd, Bradenton racing in uh, uh, 210 Grinders in a 68 Camaro. So I'd have some fun there doing some bracket racing and uh, yeah, just uh, wherever, wherever it goes, no, no real set schedule other than the division seven Lucas Oil schedule. Which is like two races or something now, right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> like when you ask where I'm going to go, I have no idea really. Cause yeah, I think we have five division races on the schedule where we typically have seven. And yeah. one of those five says to be determined. Yeah, exactly. I was looking at, at division ones. I think they have eight or nine on the division one schedule this year. I'm like, what? Because they got Echo back. That's a double. And, you know, Virginia. And I was like, wow, we got maybe three and a half. <laughs> yeah, one of those will become a D7 race. We'll yeah. have to yeah. go to D1. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was just going to say. Yeah. <laughs> And, and if, if the border actually manages to stay open, they'll be able to, the D1 guys will actually be able to go to Canada this year. Is there they'll, a they'll sell it oh, as a uh, the national opens, a couple national oh, opens. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. They got, they already got seven or eight divisions and they got like five or six national opens. Like, yeah. yeah. And then there's a new, a new national open at Lebanon Valley this year. Wow. That's crazy. April second weekend of april i think it is so. and division set division seven has a floating national open it may be at tucson it may be at vegas <laughs> who knows where it's going to be now jeremy had mentioned this at, close to the beginning of the show and it kind of popped up on everybody's radar a few weeks ago chicago is back yeah so uh, do what you happened know there? Did somebody write a check and buy the yeah. place? Or? Stop that last year. What are the details with that, Jeremy? I think only at the divisional level. I don't. They don't have a national yet. And to to my knowledge, like I don't know that there's like they they shared staff. From my understanding, I'm not affiliated with the track or anything, but um, my understanding is they shared staff. And since NASCAR canceled the speedway race they basically let everybody go because of covid and sure that race was gone so i i don't really know if they hired some people just like a dragway staff or if the d3 guys are going to man most of it or what but I, i'm just happy it's back on the schedule man that place is way too nice not to be on the schedule so yeah 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 i was that was th that that is one of the bucket list tracks that i've i've never been to I always want to do that and and you know it's i Although I think it's really cool to have the Jags All-Stars at Indy, and I think that's probably where it should be or where it should stay. It was really cool, you know, seeing it all those years at, at uh, you know, at Chicago. And uh, I think that it, I'm kind of, I got, I got, you know, mixed emotions about it. I like it at Indy, but it's just, you know, before Chicago was in, you know, National Trail for years, but then it became Chicago. And it's like, you look forward to the Jags All-Stars there. Yeah, so, uh, you know, the All-Stars at Indy, I I've raced in the All-Stars in both places. In Chicago, it felt like really like a special deal, right? Right. It was kind of like the headline of the weekend. But with, with it at Indy, I think it's cool. The history is great. I love Indy. And I won the All-Stars at Indy last year. But, like, it feels like you're a little, like, swept to the side because you got yeah. I me, mean, you got factory stock, you got now you got top fuel, funny car shootouts, whatever they're doing, right? Yeah. You don't, you don't feel like the main attraction, which we weren't ever in Chicago either, really, but <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's still, way, right? it's, yeah, it still was more special. I think I think that's kind of what I was hitting at too. The same thing is you 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 kind of shadowed a little bit at indie because like you said, all the all the stuff that it's indie. You know, so it's 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 just so much going on. But at Chicago, it was just you guys, basically. Yeah, and Indy, like the sportsman guys are still racing. They're getting ready. Like, but this year at Indy, I was in the finals in Super Gas again, and they postponed us because I forget what happened. 
we got postponed to after the pros. So all the sportsman guys like came up on the starting line and it was, it was actually really cool and special. Right. And it was at, at night under the light. So. Yeah. That's know. cool. Yeah. Mike, Mike, what's your, what's your take on the all-stars, Mike? I'm torn. Um, Cause I've, I've only been twice and it just happens to be the last two years in Indy. And I was originally, I was really glad it was in Indy just because I thought I was killing two birds with one stone, like two big bucket list items sure. for me. And yeah. uh, which it was, it was cool, but I agree. Like with what Jeremy was saying, I kind of feel like it lost its prestige. You know, you're thrown, you're like being squeezed into a race. that's already jam packed. And yeah. It's already too much going on for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I haven't even looked at the points. I'm most likely, I don't think I'm anywhere close to the top. I probably would make it next year, but even if I were, were to be the rep this next year, I think I'd pass it on. I'm done. I need a break. It's not, yeah. it wasn't that prestigious to me. I was kind of disappointed. Yeah. yeah. But I get my teeth kicked in first round of both two times I was there. So maybe that stings a little too. Maybe I'm just bitter. <laughs> That's probably what it is. <laughs> it is. Dang it. Now I just mid- admitted it to all three people listening. <laughs> no, I think we got six viewers. We're good. We're good. Oh, good. My mom might even be watching. So. Well, my yeah. mom and I got a couple sisters, so yeah, so covers them all. Jeremy's mom's probably listening too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so we're good. We're good. Yeah, <laughs> we're good. Um, yeah, I mean, I you know, someone like me, you know, I think I was like, I, think I was like eight thousandth alternate one year for for the All Stars. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I one to have that's my bucket list. So I have two bucket lists. One win a national event, or I hate to say it, win a Wally period. I've never won a, a divisional. I've never won a national. I've never qualified the all-stars. Now I've won a Wally bracket race, and that's why everybody's like, you need to come back bracket race and you do so more well bracket race. No, I won an NHRA. World. So that's my bucket list. But I think I'll take the all-stars. At Tucson, if I can just get in, and I don't care where it's at. <laughs> yeah, it is an awesome race. Don't get me wrong; I'm not knocking. Yeah, yeah. No, I I know what you meant, but yeah. But uh, so we talked about my weather. What, what's your weather there, Jeremy? Because you you're in you're in Ohio, right? I'm in, I'm in I live in Kentucky, but actually Kentucky. right now I'm in Canada. For oh, work, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I see you, whenever when anyone says division three, you just like Ohio. That's like yeah, everybody, yeah. Yeah, three, but, yeah, I'm like so, split dead center between division three and division two. So, like, I live uh, probably an hour from Rusty Cook, and he actually runs D2, and right? I run D3. So, I got you. But how's, how's the weather there? Do, do you guys get snow there? Uh, yeah, we do. Um, the last few years, we've only had like we might get like three or four inches at a time. Like, yeah, not, nothing crazy. Mike, Mike had to fight off the the heat today in the, the shorts and the, the my ties and the the pool toys. He's got it rough. I don't know. I don't know how you do it, Mike. I don't know how you do it. Kind I of told Chris I wanted to do this deal from the floaty in the pool, but he told me no. <laughs> He, Chris, he I, dude, he had to have done it in the pool. That he would like, he's already like the coolest guy that anyone's ever met. But that would just nip it in the bud, like you know. There's these, there's these two little numbers at the bottom of the, my screen, and it has an F next to it. One is the the first one is a one, the second one is a nine, and the second and the third one is an F. It's 19 degrees at my house right now. <laughs> That's no. Nice. No floaties and well, no pools with the well, freaking sun out. I'm I'm, right. I'm with you because we're looking at a low of 16 degrees tonight, so I'm I'm with you there. But I just Maybe wanted nine to tonight at my house. Nine. Nine. I'll yeah. take 16. <laughs> and you can have this, and you can still keep the snow down there. Listen, once it gets below 20 something, I don't think there's much difference between nine and 16. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you got to pick up much mile an hour. <laughs> Mike's like, what are you guys talking? No, he's from Colorado. He knows. <laughs> well, I know. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was. He he got out. You know. Yeah. So th- those winters were were they brutal in Colorado where you were? Because because aren't some parts of Colorado a little bit better than others? Yeah, um, but where I was was really honestly one of the coldest parts of Colorado. 
we're kind of oh, in the really? eastern plains of Colorado and it's flat. We were in like a real low area. So it was cold. One of the coldest parts of the state. Colorado hey, so the, this year has gotten next to nothing for snow. Too. Yeah. So yeah, they'll know, get you said, hammered in the spring. You were you were in the flats. That that brings up a question. So the first time I went there for a divisional a couple of years ago, I flew in to the to the to the airport and I'm looking around, I'm like, hmm, okay. Then I get to the track and I'm like, okay. Then I go back to the airport and I'm like, why didn't they build a track out here? It's flat. There's nothing within like nine thousand miles, but they built it on the side of a mountain. <laughs> like, what was that all about? It's been there forever. The families owned that land for, I don't know, since the fifties, I think. No, they should have sold that land and moved close to the airport. Like, geez. But yeah. I mean, it, it, I I couldn't. So I, you know, that was the first time I'd ever even gone to Colorado. So you know, not being from anywhere near there, you're just thinking the whole state's a mountain. But you get there and it's like just a plain country uh, state, yeah. like flat. It's like it's it's it, it was a weird uh, a weird deal just to look at like because the airport is on like nine million acres that just like flatness. Like they yep. could put in a racetrack at the airport, and nobody would notice. Yeah, there's a lot of flat land in Colorado. Big farming state. I don't think no. a lot of people outside of there realize that. I didn't know that either. Yeah, no, for sure. We just thought you were a big skiing state. <laughs> That's what I think of. <laughs> skiing and Bandamere. That's the only thing we know about Colorado. <laughs> and if you stuck Bandamere out by the airport in the flat land, what would make that racetrack so special? Okay. It'd look like every um, other racetrack. It wouldn't. Be, that's true, but it also wouldn't be threatened by the fourteen million dollars homes coming up around it either. That's true. We're, we're we're looking for safety of of our racetracks. We don't care what they look like anymore. We just need to keep them around. Those homes are going to get built everywhere. No, I know you're right. You're right. Except for those Vegas. idiots will buy a home next to the to the airport <laughs> also, and yeah, shut it down eventually also. Yeah. I think Vegas is one of the safest racetracks I've seen that probably won't ever have a problem, at least in our generation. Yeah. Being that it's, and it's kind of funny to see it get surrounded by stuff. Cause the first time I went out there years ago, it was it seemed like a long drive because it was in the middle of nowhere from, from the strip. And now it's like everything caught up with the track, but the way it was zoned, it's all industrial. So it's safe. Yep. And New England Dragway is safe, so. So can you kind of, kind of, kind of talk about that? Because I know that was something that a lot of people were worried about, and it was kind of uncertain. What, how were they able to to save that track, Chris? The board voted um, to kind of jump ahead of it on it a little bit. The board voted um, to not take the offer that was made. There's rumors floating. There's the round that one of them was Amazon. And the other one was Walmart to build distribution centers. But Walmart has a big distribution center about eight or 10 miles from the track. The beautiful thing about New England Dragway is that it's literally a tenth of a mile off from the highway. You, it's, it's 101. It connects 95 and 93, two of the major thoroughfares, you know, in, in the Northeast. You know, you go out of go out of the racetrack, go straight across the road, take a right, take the ramp around, go six miles this way, you're on 95 north or south. Yeah. Go out, take the first exit, go this way, go about 12, 15 miles, you're on 93, which again, you know, north or south, major thoroughfare, you know, where the track's roughly four hours by a normal street vehicle to Canada. Um, you know, it's right on the, it's right on the, um, the ocean. It's, you know, six miles from the Atlantic. Um, but yeah, so there was rumors of offers from those two corporate giants to buy the track. Nobody had any hard or firm information as to which one it was. It got put to a vote a few days before Christmas, the board, um, saw that the support from all the racers was there 
uh, Carrie Corey, who is uh, her husband, herself, and her kids um, raced in Ringland Dragway, and they raced um, multiple classes in Division One as well on the divisional level. And um, she put together, you know, one of those I change things you fill out on the internet and um there was something like thirty thousand people filled it out and it was presented to the board the board saw it and voted not to sell the track you know again it's six miles from the atlantic ocean property values over there are through you know through the roof um there's been talk in the past couple of years that some people that built houses tell me if you've heard this before you know complaining about the noise but you know new england's i think going into either their 56th or 57th year now you know a mile down the road there's a circle track that has been there since the dawn of time and um about another six or seven miles from there is another circle track that's been around since 50s or 60s so you know again these people that complain about the noise also know what they were building their umpteen million dollar house next to yeah so it's it's safe um different rumors about the safety of the national event are still popping up you know because there are some upgrades that were supposed to be done that haven't gotten done so yeah. The track is safe. The national event is still in question. It's happening this year. I don't. I don't know, and I don't think anybody really knows. You know, outside of those that sign the contracts, you know what the scoop is with that. Cool. Well, that's good. Yep. Just good to hear it's safe, though. But uh, yep. well, I guess we'll get some stuff wrapped up here. We'll get some final comments from Jeremy and Mike. Um, here in Canada working, so that's always cool. I guess uh, yeah, I guess the borders are open to go to Canada. I didn't. Uh, I guess Canada Canadians still can't come here though, right? In the U.S. Yeah, they can. They can. Oh, they can. Okay, I got you. Got you. Got you. Cool. Cool. Yeah, they just they just announced like some new restrictions uh, today here in Canada. So I don't I don't know, man. It changes day to day. Gotcha. Yeah. I I have a couple of friends that are racers that live in the, the provinces, a bunch of different provinces over Newfound, Newfoundland, um, New Brunswick, and in and around Montreal and Quebec City. I check in with them a lot. As of now, it's open both ways. I got you. Well, I'm going to go outside, get a couple snowballs, buy a Yeti, little small Yeti cooler and ship those to Mike. So he can uh, <laughs> he can get homesick, feel like Colorado. <laughs> Might even put a Coors banquet beer or something in there too. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be melted okay. by the time it gets here. But <laughs> thanks for not the thought. It, not if it's a Yeti on uh, next day. It should, should be fine. Should be, be cool. All right. <laughs> so what are what are you any any predictions this year on uh, on on the super gas and super comp champions? I mean, uh, you know, it seems like you know before we couldn't couldn't make a prediction, but Christopher Dodd has kind of showed us that we could probably count on him to be right up there in the top three. What do you guys think? Predictions for super gas first. Go ahead, Jeremy. Oh man. <laughs> Honestly, I thought about it. I mean, you always got like you, you always got like Johnny Laboos and uh Luke will be up there. Um yes. man, I haven't even thought about it. To be honest. <laughs> it's a crap shoot. Uh, yeah, it, it, really it, is. Definitely, it definitely is a crap shoot. But like you said, you, you've always got your Luke's, you've got Devin Eisenhower, you got a lot of those guys, the Mike Bainers, you got those guys that are always gonna be there. You know, in, in the in the in the running, you know. So, uh, what about Supercon? Do you think we'll see Christopher Dodd uh, pull his late year charge again, like three years in a row? Because he's he's got some September magic. Let me tell you. Yeah, he he's he's done a really good job the last couple of years for sure, for sure. Yeah, this year, like uh, you know, everybody. At one point, I was like, 
ninth or 11th and and I was looking at the points and you know I didn't have like a crazy good year in super comp um but I was like man if I can go to a couple races and do good like it doesn't really it never didn't really seem like anybody kind of stuck themselves out until sure. at the end yeah. right so yeah yeah I think super comp's a tough one like it seems like seems like there's a hundred guys that are like legit capable yeah. of going out and, and doing super good right so yeah yeah there's a there's there's a lot of guys that can get on just a little bit of roll all they, all yeah. they need is a couple good lucky rounds couple good you know good races and, and they're they can wear that that number one <clears throat> and what uh you, what do you think do you my team out to you yeah who do you think you know, it's it's hard to say. I, you know, Steve Williams always comes to mind on on you know out, out in, in D seven. He's just you know his cars are so fast, so good, and he seems to be able to win. You know, when he can, he seems to start off a little slow. It seems like um, you know Devin Eisenhower, obviously somebody that's always in there, top ten. You know, uh, and, you know too, right? and his brother Nick, yeah, got two national wins in a row this year or this past year in India and then St. Louis, you know, it's, it's, there's so many good, good, good guys, you know, you know, and if we go back to super gas, you know, Rusty Cook, you talked about him. He's, he's somebody that can sneak up and bite you at any time. You know, he hasn't had a really solid, solid year the last few years. I don't know how hard he's really tried to be honest with you either, but he's somebody that can just, that can win a world championship out, out of nowhere, you know, um, you know, Edmund Richardson, how, you know, coming back at, in the first two races and winning both of them with a brand new car. Like, and, you know, and he, said, he said he built that car to try to win the world championship. So, really, yeah. So, yeah. yeah so, that'll yeah, be if he's on a mission to yeah. win a world in super gas, like, you can't write him out. No, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I didn't know that. So, yeah. So, so I, I'll go ahead and say right here, he, he's my pick for definitely top three. This year. <laughs> I like how we're all throwing out really safe names. Like, oh, you know. <laughs> but they're guys that have been doing it for so long at such a high yeah. level. You know, so Luke fun. just, if Luke decides he wants to chase it, yeah. he's, I mean, he right. went quiet there for a short while just maybe because life brought him that way with his family you know I mean, that guy you can't ever write him off he's yeah. he's as good as anybody to ever do this with a throttle stop yeah for sure for sure i mean if you know if, if we're gonna make predictions just being you know whatever then i'm gonna predict that i <laughs> am gonna top 100 this year now no, we're gonna I'm we're gonna have a solid year. I'm I'm putting it out there that that uh, me me and Pinky are gonna get our act together here. We're gonna have a solid solid year this year. We're gonna get we're gonna get deep in, in rounds and we're gonna just just have some fun. And and uh, my goal is to top ten in the division. Um, and whatever happens nationally, just uh, it is what it is. But uh, I'm I'm definitely gonna put a, a, a like I said before. I'm not putting focus on winning, but um, I'm I'm gonna not focus on losing and, and not be upset about it either just just gonna have some fun and enjoy the enjoy the moment so i think we're gonna have a good year i think I, will too. I think i think mike's gonna top 10 for sure jeremy you you'll probably top 10 in both of them <laughs> i uh yeah I, I think this year i'm gonna focus on just the process of doing it right i always i always get hung up like whenever you set goals, you're like, oh man, I want to finish top five in both cars or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and it's something that, I mean, you can control it because you, you win rounds, but you could have, I mean, there could be five guys win seven races. I'm, you know, yeah, for sure. uh, it's a little out of your control, but I, I focused, you know, of course I have the top line goals of like, yeah, I want to, you know, win X number of national events, but below that, I have like I want to stay focused and not break my starting line routine every time I pull up to the line, right? For and sure, stuff like that. So that I'm going to focus more on the process instead of the results this year and see see where that lands out. Yeah, I think for me, it's 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 going to be kind of similar. You know, I just want to <clears throat> excuse me. I just want to kind of cut out. Or, or less than the, the actual first round losses. I mean, I, I, I've, and I know what happens. I, I'm, I'm a guy, I've talked to Mike about it, where I kind of lose focus on the starting line. I, I'm, I'm sort of too calm. 
and I've been trying to get to where I'm a little more pumped up, a little more, you know, focused. Um, because, you know, uh, you, 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 you know, you have the guys that'll be, you know, double O and time run, time run heroes, what we call them. Mm-hmm. And so I try to not have any difference between first round or, or, or time run, but I think I've focused on that so much that I've got myself too out of it, you know, too not important enough. So I kind of just, I don't know, I just kind of go mundane first round. And because uh, that's when I typically see, you know, my worst light, you know, and, and, and so I'm, I'm just going to focus on that, trying to stay a little bit more pumped up for first round and not just get, uh, cause I mean, I'll, I'll honestly be yawning in the water box first round. I can't do that. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of going to be my deal is to kind of focus on the, on the process, but uh, Here's what you, do. you do, you do your burnout. You have like a five hour energy in your glove box and just shoot it as you're backing up. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I just might do that. I just might do that. I like it. Yeah. Mike, what about you? Um, you know, I'm like Jeremy, uh, and I feel like I I beat this horse hard all the time. So I feel like Jeremy may have even stole it from me a little bit. But I'm all about the process all the time. I I focus hard on the process and very little on the results. And but that being said, I do have goals. I sure. I started racing for NHRA points back in 2018. And uh, really my focus has always just been division points. And I don't think I ever dreamed much bigger than that. Uh, My goal was to win a championship. And that first year I finished second and which exceeded my goals by a bunch actually. And I just wanted the next year to like, to be competitive. So that previous year wasn't a fluke. And right. so I don't really ever focus on those kind of goals. It's just the results. So, and this year's almost more so than any other year for me. Uh, my car's really finicky on the starting line. Um, hasn't been real solid. I needed to carry more delay or carry any delay period, actually. Um, so really, it's, it's about the process of getting that car working much better than it has been. And hopefully give myself a, I don't know, a little better chance. <laughs> I'm, I'm behind at the starting line every time I let go. So, yeah, and you know what? The, one of the things I, I've noticed about you in the last couple of years of, of knowing you is that you are not scared to tear a car apart, like before first round. Like I'm like, he just made his two time runs, first rounds in an hour, and he's got the four link out of the car. Like, what the heck? <laughs> but you you learn from it. Like that's something that you know me. I'm I'm like, all right, don't touch it, don't change it. You know, whatever. But Blah, but that's the one thing like when when you were kind of working with me in tucson is that you know hey let's screw it let's try it you know and so that's one of the things that, that I, I learned from you and your approach about the process is you know try it you know yeah if it, so. if you already know there's a weakness in your program like for me if it's a reaction time deal where i can't go better than 30 and i'm zeroed out in the delay box well what good am i doing by just leaving it i don't care if it's first round or fourth round Right. Let's yep. rip the struts out of it, put different springs on it or whatever. We've done that. And yeah, for sure. Yeah, I've seen it for sure. Yeah. I'd rub on the golf cart like that dude's nuts, but uh, he wins races. So maybe I should, I should go rip the rear out of my car too. <laughs> <laughs> got to be trying something. If it's not, yeah. if it's not perfect, got to try something, I think. For sure. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's wrap it up. Any uh, any sponsors you guys want to thank? I know Mike, you got a few, and Jeremy, you got some. Let's get some get some shout outs out here. Yeah, well, since we were brought on to mainly talk about on the stop workshop, I really want to focus on the the companies that help us within there. Um, we call them coaches, or they're companies tied with the coaches. But um, we've got Kevin Kleinweber with Hughes Performance. He's kind of our converter and transmission guru. Uh, but he's also just a really well, all-rounded race car guy. He's got so much knowledge. That guy's done more testing than anybody. And yeah. He's a wealth of knowledge. So I want to thank them. and uh, Dean McElvain with McElvain Race Cars. He's our chassis and suspension guy. Uh, we got ATM Innovations for carburetor and throttle stop help. Uh, we've got Computech uh, for weather station stuff. And they, those guys have been great. Matt Parlay has been awesome with helping us with uh, or any of our members in the group. Uh, who else am I missing, Jeremy? 
um, Greg Kelly for race. Yep. Pack, uh, yeah. Kelly. Yep. Uh, Motorsports Innovations. Uh, Motorsports he's a race pack guy, but he's also like an all round data acquisition guru also he's kind of seen it all with multiple different companies and uh, he's a real good help with us too yep cool yeah that's cool yeah i've known i've known greg for a long time racing back at Aco years ago back racing they were, they were, they're definitely two really smart smart guys with the uh, with that stuff so that's uh, that's something i didn't know that they were hooked up with you so that's that's good to know so well thanks for having us or thanks for coming on and talking to us and uh, I didn't get made fun of nearly as much as I thought I was going to be. So thanks, Mike, for kind of holding it up. <laughs> I don't know. Pete, you got lucky because Pete's not feeling good. Yeah, yeah. Pete didn't show up. Uh, I, I think, I, I thought, I think his rope ladder broke to get up into his chair at the at his desk. But uh, other than that, <laughs> I, can, I can only do it because he's not here. But, uh, but now hopefully Pete's back, and uh, I'm going to try to be back a lot more. Uh, just uh i've been busy you know and the west coast is so hard for me to get on at uh at four o'clock and with the busy shop but uh i had fun with you guys i learned a lot i'll be in touch with both of you because we all know i need on the stop workshop more than anybody yes you do <laughs> yes i do i do <laughs> all right mike jeremy guys thank you so much for coming on and hanging out i appreciate it yeah, thank you guys thanks for having us on no problem. Thanks for kicking off the new year with us. Year yep. number two, Racers News Network started tonight. So, 2022 season is here and we are ready to go. Yes, we are. All right, guys. Uh, Jerron, thank you, buddy. Glad you could make it. No so, problem. Um, next week, we're going to have Taylor Nabil and uh, Billy Kleinspin from. Uh, Maple Grove, and those that don't know, Taylor married Vince Nobile. Um, she's gonna, they're gonna be coming on talking about being selected for the 30 under 30. It's pretty cool that two people in the same division, but from opposite ends of the spectrum, one's a track employee, one's a racer, um, got chosen for 30 under 30. So we'll be talking to them next week. And uh, that is it. And hopefully next year, me and Mike will be on the 50 over 50 deal or whatever. <laughs> Not near that old. Settle down, buddy. <laughs> all right, all right. The 40-something over 40-something. But anyway, thanks for having us. Happy New Year, guys. And I will see you guys at a racetrack very soon. Yep. Thank you. Right. Thanks, guys. All right, everybody. Have a great night. We'll see you all next week, 7 o'clock. Tune in, check us out live.